morning. Good morning. Good morning. What is this thing in the sky called the sun? <laughs> right? What is this? Let's we'll celebrate by opening the service, but heaven is here right now. Boy, it feels like this. Is that such a countdown? Oh, yes. So we're going to get heaven here, and we're going to drop the grace. Here we go. Perfect. 
and life. <coughs> Flowing through us. From universe to us. Through us and back to universe. Washing us clean. Letting go. Moving deeper. Closer to the silence. To that still place within. From that silence, let us realize the truth of who we are. Divine beings at one with one another, at one with spirit. There is nowhere that we can go where we do not have that security and that peace of spirit. It is our choice. Spirit of gratitude. Gratitude not for any one thing. Just that feeling within that we are thankful for our inheritance. That we are thankful for one another. That we are thankful for this time we have together. Just grateful. We say thank you. And so it is. Amen. So this morning, I want to talk about, not about, I would like to share a message with you that the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman shared in her church. Now I don't know how many of y'all really know who the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman is in the United she uh, is famous for that phrase, it works if you work it. <laughs> and I would like to bring this talk to you this morning and channel her spirit. When I heard her speak, I felt the chill bumps and I just felt that energy and it was recorded. And I said, that is what I want to be like when I come in front of you all. I want to feel that and I want to share that energy <coughs> in the same way that she did. And if I can just come a little bit close to what she did, that will be amazing. And I think that you will feel it too. The talk that she gave was called Remolding Consciousness. Remolding Consciousness. We come here in this morning not just to share fellowship, but to learn something. And not just to learn something, but to practice something. We want to practice those things that Jesus taught us. Practical Christianity. There's universal principles. They're always working. It doesn't matter whether we believe it or not. They are always at work in our lives. If you're curious what I mean, look in your bulletin. We have the five principles of unity. And they'll give you a hint at what I'm talking about with the universal principle. 
I do have a talk coming soon about just those five basic tenets of unity, but that won't be today. Today I want to share with you a message that the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman shared. But first I want to give you an introduction to who she was, who she is, and what she is to unity. She was born in Alabama. Most people say she was born in Mississippi. But that's really not true. They didn't live long in Alabama. She moved to Mississippi. And that's where she remembers her home. She went to college. She taught. And she was diagnosed with an incurable illness. That's when she discovered unity. She went to the school of unity in the early 50s. And registered with the program to become an ordained minister. When we remember Reverend Johnny Coleman, there is some amount of shame that unity has to bear. But remember, we have repented, we have changed our direction. And I have not heard her speak about this, but I want you to understand why we have that shame. Her senior year, she nearly left the ministry at, program at Unity Village because she was not allowed to live on campus because of the color of her skin. Her classmates gathered with her support. She said, I'm going to leave if I can't live on campus. They, her classmates supported her, and Unity changed their mind. They did allow her to live on campus. It was in a separate facility. <coughs> Unity is no longer like that. That's all I want to say on that, is just know that that did happen, and know that we have changed our ways, and know that each of us has that responsibility to keep the light. So, your consciousness has to be in the awareness of God. So that we don't add negative connotations to what is said in this service. Lift your consciousness to that place. We have repented. We are forgiven as we forgive ourselves. We are here to build an awareness of God. She told us in that sermon that I insist that the members of my congregation become involved in study classes. Why? Because as long as you're just sitting there in the service with your mouth closed, you have nothing to motivate you. There is power in the spoken word. Certain words turn on the cells in our body. Spoken. Our organs, our tissues, they can feel that energy even if we're not aware of it. Sometimes you'll hear talk about money and think, wow, we talk about money in church? <laughs> there is nothing evil about money. Money is a medium of exchange. So don't be offended if you want to have some money. <laughs> it is okay to have money. To have the money in your wallet so that you can spend it. What do you choose to spend your money on? Well, that is important. Cake. <laughs> if you want cake, have your cake. God is the source 
of supply. A happy God wants to put a smile on your face. God wants us to be happy. I got a little behind the slides. <laughs> she, I get so excited I can still hear her speaking this. It's on YouTube, and I'll share that link with you. Um, it's on one of the later slides. It's just beautiful to hear her speak. Um, life is consciousness. Now, what a statement is that? Life is consciousness. Yes. Without that divine mind and that thought in divine mind, would there even be life? We carry our consciousness with us. See it. Be aware of what we're thinking. Good. Think the good and only the good. We must know what and who God is. what and who we are. And we must live. We have to do more than say these affirmations in church and sing these beautiful songs. <clears throat> but that's good practice. Because when the times are the most difficult, when we're in the middle of error thinking, when our mind is full of fear and doubt, anxiety, that's when we need to pull that affirmation out and say it again. So practice it. When you're not in those troubled times, practice it. Have you a favorite affirmation in your pocket and ready to pull out so pull it out when you're feeling good and say it. It's a lot easier to remember to say it when we're feeling good because when we get in that terrible, turbulent state of consciousness where we're just about to lose control completely, that's when we need to have that in our pocket and ready to pull out and affirm the truth of who we are and our divine inheritance. So, who and what is God? We use that word. Some people are afraid of that word because of what they've been taught about God. But I want you to know this morning that God is our comforter who is always with us. There's not a separate thing out there that is God. Sure, one of the things about God's nature is a loving Father. A loving Father who supports us and provides what we need. God is also our loving Mother who comforts us in times of trouble and lifts us up when we're feeling down. The best possible Father and Mother you can imagine because God is good. God is also our source. Where we come from, where everything that we can see, touch, hear, smell, comes from the source. God is. Being. God is principle. What does that mean, principle? Not the principle at the school, but maybe, because the principal is the head of the school. Principle is the foundation. Principle is the most basic, the most primary source. Yes. Definite. Exact and doesn't change. We may change. The situation may change. But source does not change. Principle does not change. 
God is the divine mind. The storehouse of all. If you're thinking a thought, it was there in divine mind first. Maybe it got changed a little bit as it worked its way through your consciousness. But it's still all thought comes from divine mind. God is the maker. God is love and law. The supreme rule of action. That logos, that flow from source, we see it as coming through time because of our perspective, but it is eternity. The beginning in Genesis and the now is all the same moment to spirit. God is truth, that which is and always will be the same. Even if the same is change. Isn't that neat? <laughs> okay. Man, woman, you come forth from God through that flow, from that source. We have the character and nature of our parent. We are spirit. We are divine. We are whole. We are harmonious. And the list continues. We inherit all of the natures, all of the characteristics of source. I want you to read that second line with me. Let's affirm together. I am man, woman, come forth from God, and I have the character and nature of my parents. That was so good. Let's do it again. I am man, woman, come forth from God, and I have the character and nature of my parents. Not God and Dean. God as Dean. Not God and Jackie. God as Jackie. Not God and Debbie, but God as Debbie. All of us. <coughs> we were given dominion over the earth. It says it in Genesis. The earth is our consciousness. How about that? We have dominion over our own consciousness. Choice. Free will. We were given that dominion at the moment of creation. So how do we exercise that dominion We stop letting conditions have power over us. We stop letting the external conditions that are temporary have power over our thoughts and our feelings. We're not denying our thoughts and our feelings, but we don't let them have power over us. I can have a terrible rage and be sick, and I can watch it all happen. Yes. And I can still have that stillness, and I can still have that peace, even though I am truly angry about whatever it is. So, forgive yourself. God forgives you as you forgive yourself. That's in the Lord's Prayer. We just said that. What is God? God's inside of us. That's that Christ center inside of us. We light the candle to remind us of that. So, forgive yourself. Forgive your neighbor. There's not much that's more powerful than forgiveness. You are... A thinking, 
feeling, knowing expression of God. How about that? <laughs> Our being is threefold. Spirit, soul, which is, you know, that's an older word, but remember, this is Johnny's word, and I'll explain what we mean by that, and body. So, spirit, that's the core of each of us, the truth of who we are. Soul, it has a structure, we've talked about it before. There's that thinking part of us, the consciousness. When I gave the uh, the sermon the talk on uh, on the sacred marriage, we talked about the male and the female within us, that we were each created male and female. This consciousness is that male part of us. Then there's the subconscious, the female part of us. It's that part that records everything that's going on in our lives and spits it back at the most inopportune moment. <laughs> but within that subconscious, there's also that super consciousness. That is where we find the God within us. That is our connection back to spirit. And we are body. Our body manifests what we think and what we feel. Your thoughts become the things of your life. Y'all know I was sick last week. So I said to myself, what was I thinking? <laughs> now if I said that to you, that'd be metaphysical malpractice. But I'm looking at myself, okay? <laughs> there had to be something going on within me that troubled me enough to block the flow of spirit through me. And I was, uh, because I don't get sick. So I had to do a lot of looking at myself over that time that I was sleeping and feeling icky. <laughs> and I was able to see that there were some things going on in my life that I wasn't dealing with well. I was, to put it simply, stressing about things. A lot of it had to do with problems that I had going on at work. I know I should let it go. I know sometimes I don't always let it go. Even though I'm trying and I, see, I can even see it going on. But I'm working on it. All right. So none of these parts of us, neither spirit, soul, or body, is our own. How about that? <laughs> we use God's spirit, soul, and body as source. Yep. <laughs> I just. I just love that. We are the inlet and outlet of the flow of divine thought. Not only do we allow it to come in, but when we express, we are God expressing through us. We are spiritual beings with a spiritual body created by God. Let's affirm together. It's up there. I am a spiritual being with a spiritual body created by God. Let's say it again. I am a spiritual being with a spiritual body created by God. Now let's yell it. I am a spiritual being with a spiritual body created by God. Yes. I've got chill bumps. <laughs> Don't think of yourself
itself as a physical body. That's where all of our limitations come from. It works if you work it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. A spiritual body is not limited. If you don't like what you have become, change it. You can move <laughs> mountains if you focus your attention on God the good. And do you know what the connecting link is between you and God? Your thoughts connect you with God. And when you are in prayer and meditation, you are experiencing that connection. It works if you work it. Don't just hear what I'm saying. Don't just read the books. Work it. Do it when it's easy. And it'll be easier when it's hard. <laughs> that's <was> mine. <laughs> but it's so true. Say that again. Practice it while it's easy. And it'll be easier when it's hard. Mm -hmm. Meaning when the times are hard. Have that affirmation in your pocket. It's already on your mind. You've been thinking about it. That way whenever those thoughts really start going crazy and you don't like where you're at, you can pull that out of your pocket and affirm it. Deny it. You, you may need to give yourself room to affirm it. Not this. That is not who I am. Now I have room for my affirmation. If you change your thoughts in the conscious mind, you change your life. <laughs> How do I do that? <laughs> I deny it. Call it a lie. Don't believe the lies that your subconscious feeds you. Those things that other people have told you about life. Those other things that people have told you about. This happens when you get old. That's malarkey. <laughs> Don't believe it. There is no evil. There is no evil. There is no evil. There is no absence of life, substance, or intelligence anywhere, anywhere, anytime. Repeat after me. There is no absence of life, or substance, or intelligence anywhere. Again, there is no absence of life, substance, or intelligence anywhere. One more time. There is no absence of life, substance, or intelligence anywhere. There isn't. Change your thoughts about the universe. Every thought produces after its kind. Like begets like. And we are <coughs> what we think. God. God. God is available to me. God is available to you. Say it with me. God is available to me. God is available to me. Yes. It will heal your body. It will make your pocketbooks get fat with a whole lot of hundred dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> We 
all could use a couple of hundred dollar bills in our pocket. Yes. A whole lot of them. In our purse. <laughs> a whole lot of them. Yeah. It works if you work it. It's the kind of stuff that will bring you peace of mind. Harmony in your home and ultimately in the world. It truly is our only hope of glory. Christ within. Our hope of glory. Mm -hmm. The stuff will get you stirred up inside. And it will radiate to everyone you come in contact with. There is no way that you can think these thoughts and be in that space and you will not have an effect on the surroundings around you, on the people you come in contact with. When I spoke about the evil in the world, we talked about letting that light shine, being the salt of the earth that day. What is it that I can do about the, all that stuff that I see on the news that I don't like, that I don't want to happen in this world? And the first step is with me. If I change my thinking, I begin to radiate that light out into the universe and it spreads. When a light shines, it doesn't stop. It goes from here to the other side of the universe. We're still experiencing the light that was shining into the universe from the Big Bang. It doesn't ever stop when we have those, when we can elevate our consciousness to those spiritual thoughts, when we can love our fellow persons, when we can have that compassion we set into vibration a light that lifts the entire world. It affects everybody. And the more people that are doing it, the greater the effect. <coughs> the words that I speak are for me not for you. Mm. Hmm. Until you can put down all the churchiness and the cuteness and get involved, you will not get any results. Remember, it works if you work it. We have to practice what it is we're learning here. This stuff will work if you work it, it will work. This is a do-it-yourself thing. <laughs> I can't do it for you. Yeah. You can't do it for your child. It is a do-it-yourself thing. You've got to do it for you because no one else will and no one else can. All right, all together. It works if you work it. Again, it works if you work it. And one more time, really loud. It works if you work it. It does. I'm getting chill bumps again. I thank you, Reverend Johnny Cullen, for being with us this morning. It works what? It works if you work it. It works what? If you work it. Work it. Thank you all. Thank you, Reverend John Coleman. I know your spirit is here with us today. I can feel it moving within me. All right. And through us. We've got music. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We have music. <laughs> so go ahead and stand up. Oh, it's on 251 in your songbook. 251, it's flow, spirit, flow. It's very appropriate. Well, Dad, spirit, flow, right through, right? That's right. <laughs>